So the Carnot map approach towards detecting and solving static hazards is very limited. It has a bunch of problems. Uh, first of all, it doesn't give us any way to deal with dynamic hazards. Dynamic hazards are a lot more challenging to detect and solve than static hazards. And uh, we don't have tools to deal with them if all we have to do, if all we have available are Cardinal maps. Secondly, it only allows you to deal with uh, functions with up to four variables. It's not practical to draw Cardinal maps for any uh, larger number of, uh, of input variables. Most combinational logic blocks are going to have a lot more inputs and are going to be a lot more complex than just four variables. Uh, the best way actually to detect and solve hazards, whether they are static or dynamic, is to look at logic expressions and try to work from the logic expressions. So uh, basically, the thing you're looking for when you look at a, a logic equation is you're looking for expressions of the form x plus x bar or x times x bar. These are basically expressions or terms that indicate the possibility of a hazard. If you think about it in an abstract form, x plus x bar is always equal to 1. This is a uh, logic simplification that we always make. However, because there can be a differential delay between the x and the x bar, because we have a true and a complement form of a variable making an appearance, there is a possibility that there will be a glitch. Now, because the output here is supposed to be 1 all the time, the kind of glitch we can see will be a static uh, 1 hazard, so uh, a static 0 hazard. So this is specifically the kind of hazard we can observe with uh, the structure x plus x bar. Now the term x times x bar, where x and x bar is always equal to zero by logic simplification, uh, but again, because we can have differential delay between x and x bar, even though they have a stable value of zero, there can be a glitch of one, which means that we have a static zero hazard. Now, the um, objective is when you have a circuit you, or you have a logic expression, you want to try to extract the uh, terms x, x bar, or x plus x bar. So let's look at an example because this will help us uh, illustrate this better than anything. Let's take the function z equals ab into c plus de bar in plus f into gh plus a plus ek so obviously this is a logic function with a lot of input variables um, and the Carnot map approach is not going to be very useful in trying to extract any kind of logic hazard from this expression instead we have to use intuition and we have to use uh, uh, boolean algebra in order to extract the static hazard and also in order to solve it so uh, if you look at this, you will see immediately, just by using basic logic, that the only variable that has the potential to produce a hazard is variable E. No other variable of all the other variables has the potential to trigger, to trigger a hazard. And the reason for this is that E is the only variable that makes an appearance in its true and its complement form. In fact, this is a very special case because E is the only variable that makes uh, more than one appearance anyway. But even if a variable made more than one appearance, uh, we still cannot accuse it of the potential of glitching unless it appears in its true and its complement form. And E is the only variable that does this in this case. Now, does E cause a static one hazard or a static zero hazard? Uh, the answer can only be gleaned if we think about what values for the other variables will bring out the glitch. So there are many other variables in this logic function, and we have to think about what they have to be at in order to allow E and E bar to meet together. This is basically uh, the exercise we're going to go through now, because, for example, if A is equal to zero, then A is going to mask E bar by multiplying it. And so E and E bar are never going to form either E E bar or E plus E bar. And so they will not be glitching. And so we know that A and B 
have to be equal to 1 in order for E and E bar to meet anywhere in the circuit. And so we know for a fact that A and B have to be equal to 1. We also know that F has to be equal to 1 because it multiplies E. We also know that K has to be equal to 1 because it multiplies E. We also know that D has to be equal to 1 because it multiplies E bar. On the other hand, C has to be equal to 0 because if C is equal to 1 and it is ORed or added to D E bar, then it's going to mask that entire first bracket by causing its value to become 1. And so we will have uh, perhaps an appearance of E, but not an appearance of E bar. And so C has to be equal to 0. G and H are a little bit uh, complicated because all we need is for one of them to be equal to 0. So G and H um, can either be 0, don't care, or don't care, 0. So they could be 0, 0. Uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, but not 1, 1. So they could be anything except 1, 1 because we want their product to be equal to 0. In that case, if we uh, have all of these values for all of the other variables, then z is going to be equal to e bar plus e. So because we have e bar plus e, we obviously have a static 1 hazard because the output of z in this case, under these conditions for these variables, the value of z is expected to be 1 all the time. However, it will glitch because there will be differential delay between e and e bar. So now this approach obviously allows us to detect and extract the potential for hazard very easily. Because all you have to do is you have to look for variables that appear in true and complement form and then think about the other variables and what their values have to be in order to bring out the true and the complement form of the uh, culprit variable. Th there could of course be the potential for multiple hazards to come from multiple sources, from multiple variables, in which case you will deal with each variable um, uh, independently one at a time. The value of this approach of using logic equations in order to bring out logical hazards is that it also allows you to find the solution. So it allows you to uh, solve the hazard very easily. And the fact, the, uh, the way we solve static one hazards is by adding a, a redundant min term or a redundant product term actually. And that product term, all it has to do is it has to mask the function by forcing its value to become 1 for the culprit transition. So when we looked at this particular example, we found that there is a transition in uh, which E makes from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, uh, and we rely on E in both cases to fix the value of the function at 1. However, we see a glitch because of the differential delay between E and B and E bar. So under these conditions for all of the other variables, whether the value of e is 0 or 1, the function has to be 1. But if we depend on e, whether it is 0 or 1, to fix the value of the function at 1, it will glitch because of differential delay. So if we add a product term that forces the function to be 1 for this combination of the other variables, we will not be changing the function. We will not be changing the functionality of the circuit because the functionality of the circuit produces a 1 for these, this combination of the other variables regardless of the value of E. On the other hand, we will be masking the glitch because we will be forcing the function to become 1 regardless of the value of E. And so E can glitch all it likes. This additional term is going to force the function to become 1. So basically, all we have to do is we have to add a product term that causes the function to be 1 for this combination of the other variables and forget about E. So basically, it has to be 1 when A, B, F, K, D, C bar, because C has to be 0. And then G and H, you have multiple choices. You can have G bar, H bar, or G, H bar, or G, uh, or G bar, H or uh, that's it, right? So you have three choices for G and H. Any of them is fine. Now, this additional term solves the 
uh, static has it at the core because it forces the function to be 1 if e is equal to 0 or e is equal to 1 for this combination of the other variables.